opening statement from Coach, and then open it up for questions. So, whenever you're ready, Coach. Yeah, thank you for uh, being with us today. You know, new year, new team, same goal uh, to win the SEC East. Uh, we're excited to open spring football and to really begin creating our edge for this team and this season. You know, each year the process starts over and you have to lay a foundation, and that's really what our uh, objectives for not only off-season workouts, but spring football are. <clears throat> you know, we've been working over the last couple of months through some strategic realignment. Uh, I'm excited about how we've been able to continue to push this program forward. Uh, by making some strategic moves to add championship value and pedigree to our program and SEC experience. Um, you know, today there was a release on a couple of new additions. I'd like to announce the addition of Ryan Russell as our executive director of athletic performance. Um, he will oversee uh, the, the critical area of player development and cultural development within our program. Uh, really um, being in charge of and coordinating all aspects of uh, strength and develop, strength development, nutrition, equipment, athletic training. Um, he's got a championship pedigree from his time at Auburn. Have a personal relationship with Ryan back to our days at, at Auburn and Arkansas State, uh, and excited for his knowledge uh, of this conference and what it takes to win uh, this conference. Uh, and him and Sarah are going to be great additions to our staff. We also added Brett Whiteside as our chief recruiting officer. Um, he will coordinate the entrance and exit of our players into our program by uh, being uh, the lead person in organizing and operate day-to-day -day operations of recruiting those young guys, uh, young men into our program, as well as coordinating the postgraduate uh, career development for our program. And so really excited about uh, the level of organization and insight uh, that Brett has and brings to our program and, and excited to bring to uh, add Natalie and Timothy uh, and Brett to our program there. The Damian Wa Washington is, has been elevated to director of player development. Um, obviously, the Damian's a former player here and a team captain uh, who went on to have uh, just a great career uh, in life after football, or life with football, and now we're we'll welcoming him back to life after football. Just been impressed with the relationships that he's been able to forge with our players. Uh, and just a, 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 a great man of character that can really uh, benefit our players on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and he's doing a great job with character development, real-world uh, experiences, and he's helping coordinate with Brett Whiteside on our postgraduate careers. Uh, he's helped with our uh, freshman bridge program and developing the curriculum for that. So very fired up about with Damian being back a part of, of who we are at Mizzou. And then today we added Aaron Fletcher uh, to be our defensive backs coach. Uh, Aaron has spent the past six years at Tulsa. He was on uh, 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 yeah, Coach Montgomery's first staff at Tulsa. Uh, he spent two years at Houston Baptist before that. Uh, he's got extensive connections in the DFW area, which is a primary recruiting ground for us. And we're excited to bring him and his uh, wife, Tanzania, and their three children uh, to our campus. And he'll be joining us. Uh, uh, by the end of this week, ready in time for spring ball. Nothing like a, nothing like a, sh uh, uh, quick hire and and uh, getting ready to coach some football. So, uh, as far as spring, we have three distinct goals for our spring football practice. Number one is individual player development. Again, our goal uh, is for each and every single player on our team to develop this spring, to take them from where they're at, to get them to a different place as a player and as a person. Um, fundamentally, and fundamentally and technique, we want to continue to increase their ability and knowledge. As we learned last year, everybody's going to have to contribute uh, to our football team's success. And so spring is about them developing. They've had about six weeks in the weight room, and now we want to transition uh, and work really the next four weeks uh, in football fundamentals and, and technique. Number two, we're going to lay the foundations of our offense, defense, and special teams, and we're not going to skip any steps. Uh, we're starting at the beginnings uh, with – Although offense and special teams have a little bit of a leg up on the defense, we're going back to the ba basics uh, because we didn't get to do this last year and, and look forward to starting at the groundwork and, and building up. Uh, excited for Coach Wilkes to be able to do that with his defense also and really work together, compete against each other, but strive together to uh, put us in a position to can compete for the SEC East. And then third, and, and probably the most important is continue to work on team chemistry and camaraderie. We really need to develop um, leaders on our team, but develop that team chemistry so we're playing for each other, um, playing for the man next to us on the football field, 
and develop that camaraderie in the trenches and, and on the football field. And so we got a lot to accomplish. We got a lot to work on. Uh, we spent a lot of time evaluating um, the last two weeks or the last two months on specific areas that we really need to improve. I've had a lot of time to really uh, think about, you know, what what are the strategic things that we need to do to continue to push this program forward. Uh, and we know right now is a critical component of that with spring football. Uh, and, and it's not going to be as much about the scheme as it is about individual player development fundamentals of our, our foundations of our offense and defensive uh, units and special teams units and then building team chemistry and camaraderie. So with that, I'll open it up for questions and uh, keep going. Go ahead, get your hands raised in the queue and we'll get started. Looks like first question, Gabe Diarm and Power Mizzou, go ahead. Eli, how, how big a difference is it? Not only do you know your players and your roster a little bit more than you did 12 months ago, but that they know, kind of know what to expect out of you and, and the way you run the program going into spring. Yeah, I think there's uh, obviously a familiarity there, which is going to allow them to anticipate. And obviously anticipation is a, a key part of growth where you can anticipate what's next and kind of be ready for it. Um, but the one thing I've challenged everybody on is that that we cannot we're not building upon next year. We're establishing a new, you know, a new edge for who we are and what we're trying to create for this this coming season and and embrace the challenges and changes that we that have occurred and realize that uh, everything starts over. Everything starts over and nothing that we accomplished last year uh, other than the confidence that we have and what we're doing will work is going to affect what we want to do this year. Eric Blum, Columbia Daily Tribune. Hey, Eli, I hope you're doing well. Uh, you kind of mentioned it in your opening statement, but obviously last spring did not go as planned for anybody. Did that kind of prove to you just how valuable spring football is when you don't have an opponent just to prepare for every Saturday? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we've always kind of known how important spring football was for individual player development and understanding your strengths and weaknesses. Um, but you also understand that your team is still going to be evolving. Uh, you're going to be adding freshmen in this summer, and there's going to be – uh, things that you don't anticipate happening. So I think there's, again, a renewed focus for us on doing those first three things we said instead of worrying about so much schematically what we're doing, worrying about, again, individual player development. Mitch, 40, Power Mizzou, go ahead. Eli, I know the news about Aaron Fletcher is obviously very recent, but do you have a sense of how the, the coaching responsibilities will break down in the secondary with Coach Harbison there and Coach Wilkes potentially being involved there as well? Yeah, congratulations on being the first to report uh, Aaron Fletcher's announcement as the new DB's coach there. Mitchell, I'd like to point out a job well done. I think I, give, I gave you some some uh, grief in a podcast, so I'd like to congratulate you on competing there to try to get that. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think we have a pretty good sense of how that will play out, but I want to get Aaron here first. And, and obviously, Coach Wilkes uh, has spent – a long time coaching corners, and I know that he is uh, anxious to get his hands uh, on the corners and make sure he establishes his uh, DNA and fingerprints on that position. I, I know Coach Harbison has got extensive time uh, in the safety position, and we'll figure out whether or not Coach Fletcher is coaching the nickels or if he takes time with the corners or safeties or how that works. But uh, we've got some position flexibility there with, with our coaching staff. Um, obviously, Coach Smith will be with the linebackers. And Coach Franklin will be with the D-line and, and uh, so on and so forth. But we'll, we'll see where that all ends up playing out. I just I do know for sure that Coach Wilkes is going to be the corners coach. Andrew Kaufman, KMIZ. Coach, I don't think we've had a chance to talk to you since uh, the some, some updates with the indoor facility. Um, are you happy with the, the placement of the, of the facility and kind of – What's the update there with with that, and when you guys can expect to to see it start getting built? Well, I, I know that I was looking out my windows today, and there was surveyors out there, and they're looking at at, at the the positioning of the indoor, and I anticipate it being you know right outside the southeast end zone facility, which um, for the sake of convenience and and I think for the long term look of of this southeast end zone facility, and you've got you're gonna have a, a beautiful indoor, you've got the southeast end zone facility, you've got the arena, you know, kind of being our focal point for the, 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 the athletics uh, department. I, I think it's certainly a great position, obviously. Um, anticipate, I think, May, we have another meeting uh, to, to continue to move forward with that. So I don't speak for uh, our, our president of the university or our board, board of curators. I certainly fall in line with, with their 
uh, authority, but I'm excited about what they've improved so far, and we're continuing to work diligently to secure uh, fundraising and secure uh, more donations to get this thing uh, built. And like I've challenged, um, you know, people, our team, our staff, our players, and, and as I'll continue to challenge our fans, commitment is not a one-time act. You have to recommit yourself uh, to pursuing a championship each and every offseason. And we got to continue as a, as a fan base and as donors to continue to pursue that championship mentality. Uh, so we're going to be knocking on doors and, and asking for continued donations and, and stepping up to the plate. Uh, nothing would excite us more. Obviously, uh, we've got a taste of a championship with, with the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl, uh, you know, with the Royals several years ago winning the World Series, with the Cardinals winning uh, the World Series. Uh, it, it's time for the Missouri Tigers to, to step up to the plate and continue to push this program forward. But we need everybody uh, involved in that and continue to push so that we can get there. Dave Matter, Matter St. Louis Post Dispatch. Hey, Eli, with the uh... The newcomers you have in the program that came in the semester, how do you kind of work them into the program as far as spring goes? Do they have to earn reps or how, what's that transition like for them? Well, again, it's all going to be about individual player development. So uh, everybody's going to get reps and opportunities to perform and develop. And it's not going to be uh, necessarily as much about trying to create the, the chemistry with a group of ones, twos, or threes. It's about, hey, who, how is this person uh, – performing how is he getting better and everybody's going to have an opportunity to do that we're really excited about the 11 uh early enrollees or or new guys that we have and, and they're absolutely uh are going to get an opportunity to perform you know there's really only depth charts for functionality there's no real depth charts at the end of spring to determine everything will be determined in fall camp fall camp where you really compete for positions this is about an opportunity for these guys to be aggressive in their development uh, go out, make mistakes, learn from those mistakes, come out and continue to get better, uh, continue to find their edge and how they're going to be, um, you know, best developed to be a player that can help us win. Andy Humphrey, KTGR. Hey, Eli, um, just what, what do you want to see out of Connor this spring and how do you want him to kind of value uh, this time since, you know, when, when you usually, when you work with a quarterback that has established himself as a starter, you know, the season before, what do you, what steps do you want a, a guy like that to usually take in the springtime? Well, the first, first thing we have to improve on is our ball security in the pocket. Um, the second thing we need to improve upon is our uh, uh, ability to throw touchdowns in the red zone and be a, a, a more, um, productive player in the red area. And then the third thing I want to see him is be aggressive. I don't want to see him be reckless, but I want to see him be aggressive this spring and figure out, okay, I can throw these balls into this window. I can, I can put this ball here. I can back shoulder this one. I can fit it into that tight window and make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. Obviously, I don't want to be reckless. I don't want him to be uh, careless or comfortable. Uh, what I want him to be is to challenge himself and, and uh, uh, continue to improve as a quarterback. And I think there's going to be, obviously, y'all be out at some practices. I think you'll see plenty of times where we're going to challenge them. Colin O'Brien, Jeff City News Tribune. Hey, Eli, uh, like you mentioned, the early enrollees, you'll get the rest of the class in the summer. But just where, where are you at in terms of the depth of, of this team with all the roster flux that happens and has been happening all over college football? Uh, I feel good about it. Um, I, you know, I think the thing that has really been beneficial for us is that that uh, uh, extra year of eligibility that's been granted by the NCAA, which has allowed us a little bit of an easier, smoother transition with some of the guys moving out of the program and allowed us uh, to really bring some other guys into the program, but still create some valuable depth. Um, so don't have any glaring roster holes right now that we need to fix, but uh, feel like we've got some competitive competitive depth, some competitive uh, uh, position group competitions that are really going to show up, um, probably not as much in spring, but show up in fall camp. And, and then we still have uh, a few positions available to, to sign, uh, it, you know, if a transfer or something comes on the market or a high school player comes on the market that we really would like. Aaron Ladd, 41 Action News in Kansas City. Hey, Eli, working on a story about some of the protests that happened in the program in 2015. I know you weren't a part of the group, but – Kind of wanted to see what your perspective was as an outsider then and now kind of looking forward, how it empowered college athletes to have so, kind of have a voice. Yeah, you know, I, 
I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about necessarily 2015. I've spent a lot of time thinking about our team and how we can use uh, our voice and our platform to promote change. And that's really what our Mizzou Impact Initiative has been about. Uh, it's about being impactful, not just with statements, but with action uh, within our community and using our influence in a positive way. Um, you know, as far as what we've done uh, recently is we've spent time um, with community service projects. We've had uh, hundreds of hours in the month of February in community service projects, even with COVID. Uh, we're a part of a group called uh, Mizzou Impact, which is a part of a, a our care portal, uh, which is something that, that we do uh, and have done once a week during the off season and we did uh, throughout the season. And we obviously did some things with backpacks and then our voter registration drive. So we're continuing to find ways to utilize our voice. We're gonna be doing something uh, unique on Friday and on Saturday to promote uh, African American Hit or Black History Month and our recon recon recognizing of Norris Stevenson as our first African American player to play here at, at Mizzou. So, uh, you know, again, I don't know, I can't speak specifically to 2015. All I can speak about is us finding our ways to continue to promote uh, our platform for, for positivity. Gabe, the Armin Power Mizzou. Hey, I know last year it was a, a big uncertainty with rosters and eligibility, but I think you guys got at least five starters back using that extra year. Just in the end, how big a benefit to your program in year two is, is being able to use that extra year with those guys that came back? Yeah, we're excited about those guys to come back and, and uh, compete and to continue to grow. And what I challenged all of those guys on was to utilize this year as an opportunity to get better. Um, and so whether or not the returning starters or returning players, uh, the challenge for them is to continue to grow and improve and utilize this time as a as an opportunity to get to get better. Greg Palermo, Fox 2 in uh, St. Louis. Hey, Coach, I'm, I'm curious, uh, you, you you mentioned not having any glaring um, holes as far as the roster goes. Uh, you've obviously got some uh, some leadership um, holes to fill and, and big shoes to fill with Nick Bolton uh, heading off to the NFL in particular. I'm wondering how you see the, the spring helping you uh, start to, to figure that piece of the puzzle out. Yeah, and I think this will actually go back to Gabe's question too you know obviously going into this past year we were really worried about our defensive line having you know a potentially nine uh seniors leaving the program and trying to replace nine guys at, that, at the front and obviously this is a trench league and so to have several of those guys come back while also being able to add junior college depth and true freshman depth is going to allow us to really try to be deep and competitive at that position. And that's that's the goal is competitive depth so that you can play with eight to 12 guys. Who, when, you, when you sub in the second or third team, they're fresh and, and, and don't have a drop off. As far as linebacker, obviously you're gonna lose a, a second team All-American, a, a guy that I consider will be a, a first or second round draft pick. And I'd be shocked if he gets to the second round, but uh, a guy who you know was a tremendous player in this league for several years and so, you don't easily replace that. That's, again, while it's about individual player development and each player finding their edge, um, we're going to have a lot of guys, you know, rep at that position to see ultimately who can be that uh, linebacker. Um, excited to see how the 4-2-5 uh, scheme that, that uh, Steve is going to bring in is going to, you know, amplify and allow our guys to play a little bit faster on the back end, knowing that they're just responsible for one gaps and a little bit more um, – dialed in on, on exactly what their run fit is. Um, obviously, we're going to be adding some linebackers, some really good linebackers this summer. And so none of these positions will be finalized until we give those guys an opportunity to complete fall camp. Blair Kirkhoff, Kansas City Star. Eli, I was going to ask you about Steve. Where, where, where was that, where'd that connection originate? And just take us through the hiring process of Steve. Yeah, Coach Wilkes is somebody that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Obviously, when in my time in Raleigh is when uh, the Carolina Panthers were first in the Super Bowl and uh, got a, got to understand and know who Coach Steve Wilkes was and what his DNA and foot, fingerprint on that defense was for the Carolina Panthers. And then I uh, didn't realize until I got there that he was an alumni of App Appalachian State. Um, and then when I got the head coaching job, 
obviously we connected um, and, and reached out there and then uh, stayed in touch with him. Um, and then when this job came open, reached out to him about uh, if he would have interest. Um, obviously, he had a lot of things going on uh, in the NFL and opportunities there and, and uh, got the opportunity to get in front of him and really sell our vision for what Mizzou is and can be. Uh, and the opportunities that it could present for him and his family, and and um, you know, uh, gave him my, the best best pitch I had, and uh, he he finally relented and agreed, and and uh, excited about what he's going to do and bring to the table. Hey, can I follow up and ask you how how'd you get to the Super Bowl this year? I tried to find you from the press box; they wouldn't let us out of the press box. Well, crud, uh, I I, uh, I got on a plane and I flew down there. Was there a connection with a player or? Uh... No, 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 no. Just a fan, just a fan. Got an opportunity to watch uh, the greatest of all time versus the the hometown team, and thought that was an opportunity of a lifetime that I'd never forget. I'd never been to an NFL game before, uh, and the, the Super Bowl is kind of one of those bucket list items. I got about four of them um, from a sports perspective, and that was uh, one of them, and and was you know presented an opportunity to kind of make that dream come reality and and uh took advantage of it and, and boy I'm, I'm sure glad i did it was uh no it wasn't the outcome we wanted for the hometown team but it was uh it was impressive to watch uh tom brady live mitchell 40 power mizzou yeah i know you'll be excited to answer your first injury report question of the year um are you able to to clarify any um guys who are going to miss time during the spring due to injury yeah, Kobe Whiteside will be out uh, for the spring as he's recovering from a from a postseason surgery. Uh, Cam Wilkins will not be back; he's still recovering from uh, his in season surgery. Um, Jatorian Hansford will be out for the spring as he's recovering from a postseason uh, injury surgery. Um, I think as of right now. Off the top of my, I don't have my injury report in front of me, but I think those will be the three um, that will be gone uh, or will not participate in spring. But we do anticipate having J.J. Hester back full speed, um, which is exciting for us. Uh, we are excited, really excited to see Sean Robinson go through a full spring at the transition to safety, and he's ready to go full speed. Um, so other than that, I think, unless there's a, somebody specific that you have, Mitchell, I think. I think that that's the list. And last one today is Andrew Calkins, KMIZ. Go ahead. Just wanted to, to follow up on, on you just mentioned Sean Robinson there. What, what do you expect from him? Obviously, you know, he had the interception, he had that great game uh, when he was in there. Do, do you think that he could be like a starting safety for you guys and, you know, potentially a game changer like he was in that one game last year? Well, I mean, I think that's a lot of pressure to put on Sean. And, and uh, I think, you know, I don't, I don't want to compare him to anybody and I don't want to put any undue pressure on him. What we expect out of Sean is for him to be the best version of himself every single day, to walk out there and compete, to be better today than he was yesterday, be better tomorrow than he was today. And if he does that consistently over the, the, the month of March, there's going to be good days and bad days. There's going to be times when he learns something new that he hasn't done before. But the thing I know about Sean is he's going to work his butt off to master the technique. He's going to be extremely coachable. Uh, and, I, and I personally think the sky's the limit for him. Um, I mean, I know what I saw in that, in that last game that he played in. And so, obviously, he's got a, a lot of uh, potential, and we are sure excited about that. Uh, but I don't, I don't put any uh, – oh, I, I'm one other person. I don't put anything uh, – expectations or undue expectations on him. To follow up on uh, Mitchell Forty that reminded me um, – Jelani Williams will be out this spring recovering from a postseason uh, upper body uh, surgery. And so he will miss the spring, which will allow Sean uh, to take some advantage of those reps. Coach, just to quickly want to follow up. You said the Super Bowl was your first NFL game ever that you've ever been to? Yeah, I didn't stutter. I don't think, right? I'm just kidding. Yes, now first football, first NFL football game never attended. Heck, heck of one to start it with, right? Hey, we had one more jump in, Gabe. One, one more. Let, all right, let's just keep on going, Gabe. <laughs> I, I, I was just curious. Obviously, uh, this is is pretty early for spring ball, and you're getting done before spring break. Was there any particular reasoning that that you wanted to to move it earlier, uh, or is that that just kind of when you've done it in the past? Yeah, I don't I don't want to lay on the beach worrying about spring football. So, 
No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I, there, there's all kinds of reasons why. I, I think for me personally, I've done it before like this, and I feel like it's a really good opportunity for your guys. Uh, one, you take the six weeks uh, that they get back from um, what would have been our bowl game, but but they get back, they get six weeks to get their body in shape, and then you go straight into football. And once that's done, there's really four months of uninterrupted training that they get to change their bodies. And there's not going to be the wear and tear, whereas some programs will go eight weeks and then they'll spread uh, spring football over the course of six weeks. And then at that time, they have one week and then they got the end of the semester. And you really only get two months of uninterrupted training. We're trying to maximize that time with four months of uninterrupted training give our guys a chance if there's, you know, something unfortunate, uh, an injury or a twink day goal or something like that during spring, they have uh, four months to really get back to full speed. Um, and again, we want to try to create as little contact, but as long recovery as we can to really enhance player safety. Um, and so uh, I think it gives a lot of, a lot of flexibility to your staff. And then I personally have never liked the idea. I've never, Never really enjoyed where you go practice for you know seven eight practices, then you break and then you come back. It's uh, if we're going to get out there, let's let's get our minds on our business. Let's go four weeks. Let's make sure we're improving every day. And it's going to be a grind, uh, but when it's over, we can all drink mai tais on the beach and, and have a good time. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you, everyone. All right, Miz. See you. Thank you.